Hey guys, I hope you're having a great Holy Week so far as we prepare for the Triduum and we prepare to celebrate Easter next weekend. As you may have seen, about a week and a half ago, Pope Francis gave a blessing to the whole world. It was on TV and uh, it was called an Orbi at Orbi blessing where he spent some time praying with us and for us. Um, we spent time in adoration with him virtually and he gave us a a short reflection and homily and uh, a blessing to the entire world, which is really awesome to see. I wanted to take a couple minutes now to just kind of look at some of his words to be able to use his words for encouragement as we go throughout this next week. So he reads, starting off from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. He says, On that day, as evening drew on, he said to them, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took him with them, in a boat just as he was, and the other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat, so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? So Pope Francis says a couple things about this, and there are three points in particular that I wanted to point out that he talks about. One of the first things he says in his homily on this is that while his disciples are quite naturally alarmed and desperate, he stands in the stern, in the part of the boat that sinks first. And what does he do? In spite of the tempest, he sleeps on soundly, trusting in the Father. Jesus is sitting in the stern of the boat, and as Pope Francis says, that's the part of the boat that sinks first. That's the part of the boat in the back where the water would fill up, and Jesus in, is in most danger of sinking. Um, but he has trust in the Father in that moment. And I think that's very key, that is very key for us to, to understand and to, and to ponder, is that he's there with us, not just in the same place as us, but he's taking a, a greater risk. He's taking a great risk being with us in the dangerous storms. And he allows us to be able to, to go through these storms in our life, to go through these, these trials to be able to develop a greater trust in God, to be able to develop a greater faith in our Heavenly Father. The next point that I really like that Pope Francis makes, he says, the tempest lays bare all our prepackaged ideas and forgetfulness of what nourishes other people's souls. We have a lot of prepackaged ideas of how we can minister to and serve other people and how we live our own lives for ourselves. And that's all out the window right now. Nothing is normal. Nothing is the way it's supposed to be or the way that we're used to. And that can be a good thing, to be able to slow down, to take a step back and look at how we're serving God and what we do, how we're serving other people and what we do. What are some ways this week and throughout the Easter season that we're approaching that we can really rethink the way that we live our day-to-day -day lives. And the last point that Pope Francis makes that I want to take a look at, he says, we are not self-sufficient. We need the Lord like ancient navigators needed the stars. Let us invite Jesus into the boats of our lives. Let us hand over our fears to him so that he can conquer them. All we have to do is trust in Jesus. It sounds simple, it is simple in the sense that we simply have to turn to him in prayer. That's what he's calling us to do, is to spend time with him, to make silence in our lives throughout the storms of whatever's going on in our lives right now, to make time for him, to spend time in silence, in intimacy with him. I want to challenge you guys as we approach the Triduum and Easter to spend time in prayer, praying for greater trust in the Father, just as Jesus gives us that example, to pray for greater faith, 
and to pray for hope, not just hope that we'll experience an end to this pandemic, which is incredibly harmful, but hope in the, in the resurrection, hope that one day we'll see Jesus face to face in heaven where we belong. 